Hello and welcome to Good Morning UK Have Your Say, a Force for Goods mid-morning show coming to you live from our nerve centre here in the heart of the great British city of Glasgow with me, your host, Alistair McConaughey. And thank you very much for tuning in and we're broadcasting live today across our Facebook YouTube and Twitter platforms and already Linda is saying hello good to see you again Linda from Southeast London and of course TC is in as always good morning to all fellow unionists from all over our wonderful United Kingdom and more about our wonderful United Kingdom today in the program McGregor McGregor from Edinburgh good to see you Good to see all you guys in here and James as well over on Facebook. And you know, what a day today. Um, Madam Sturgeon is going to be appearing in front of a Holyrood committee. Now, the Tories have already put out a message saying that they believe new evidence proves beyond doubt that she broke the ministerial code and that she should resign. And, well, we'll be hearing more from her today when she sits in front of this committee and goes, it wasn't me, it wasn't me, it was him. And people will no doubt make up their mind. But the question is, the question, folks, is, is she going to resign? Because wouldn't that be wonderful? Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could purge the sturge and is this the time that we're going to purge the sturge? Is Hamza going to get the heave? And is Swinney going to get in the binny? Wouldn't that be wonderful? What a present that would be prior to the 6th of May elections, which are only nine weeks away. And they are happening, by the way. They are happening, the, the elections. Good morning to Morwina. Great to see you from Cornwall. And to Tommy. Good morning, troops. Good morning to you, Tommy, and to Alan as well. And there's Ryan. Good morning from God's own country of Yorkshire. And also Graham there. Graham, good morning, Scotland. Good morning, the great Sharon. Good morning to you, Sharon. Hope you're well this morning. And Lee's looking in from the Netherlands. British lass living in the Netherlands. Wonderful that you can see us, Lee. Good for you. Hope you're well. And Catherine, good morning, Great Britain. Caroline, good morning. No room for Nicolaia to hide today. Exactly. No room for her to hide. She's now in the hot seat and it's all coming down upon her head. But will she be able to survive it? Um, you know, she does she she does have an amazing penchant for survival there's no question about that good morning to you ray and to amy as well and to ibrox park from county down and may from fife and mark that's great stuff now folks please send in your thoughts and there's nelson good morning to all brits send in your thoughts do we do we believe do we believe that Will Sturgeon resign before the 6th of May election? That's our question to you. Is this really going to happen? You know, a few months ago, we would have said, no, there's no chance. But that was before the media actually were looking at all of this. You know, she was getting an easy ride from the entire British media. And the entire British media was not interested at all. And to the extent that it was interested, it was, as we always say, running interference for her, making excuses and just overlooking the negativity. But things have definitely changed. Things have definitely changed. Now, folks, uh, so I'd be interested in your thoughts on that. Now, at uh, 11 o'clock, we've got a guest coming in. It's going to be our co-director of A Force for Good. I know many of you will be interested to see who that is. It's a fantastic gentleman called Ronnie Kane and he's going to be given his words of wisdom on this particular issue as well. That's at the top 
of the hour and before the top of the hour we'll have our competition as well which will be based upon this day in British history which we'll talk about in uh, 10 minutes. Desmond, good morning Great Britain from an Ulster Scott living in Germany. Good morning Desmond, good to see you. And Ian says justice worse must be done today. Justice must be done because her arrogance is shocking as Scott as Scott points out. And Caroline says, no, she'll stay, but she should resign. And I get that feeling, is she really going to resign before the 6th of May? No, she's probably not. But who knows what could come out? Because there is an independent uh, committee that's looking at whether or not she has broken the, myster the, the mysterious code, the ministerial code. And according to uh, Alan Cochran here in the... Daily Telegraph. If this separate independent ethics inquiry by a leading Irish barrister, to which Salmond has submitted evidence, concludes that she did break the ministerial code, then she will have to resign. She will have to resign. And that's the Scottish political editor of the Telegraph saying that. So it just depends then upon this, uh, the the, the independence of this particular committee and whether it is going to have the courage to 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 do the to do the right thing so we could we could be seeing the sturge purged we could be purging the sturgeon which would be just a, an astonishing turn up for the books but not before time because for 14 years these guys have been getting away with basically doing whatever they want simply because they can claim to be nationalists and as such not held to the same standards as all other politicians appear to be held to. And James just says she won't go, she wants to retain total control over us. She certainly does want to retain that. Whether the confluence of powers will be such that she'll be forced out is going to be very interesting and you know this could happen a, a few months ago people were thinking that the SNP are going just to steamroller through this election again and they're going to be uh, re-elected with a massive majority blah 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 but things are really changing you can feel it in the air you know I spoke that will Humza get the heave it's very possible that Humza Yusuf will lose his Glasgow Pollock seat because he's not standing on the regional list at all. He's uh, standing only on the first past the post. And he could get caught up in all of this. And, you know, he deserves to lose his Glasgow Pollock seat. And wouldn't that be absolutely amazing justice for him after he brought in this horrible anti-free speech law, which is going to get voted on by Parliament at the end of March? Wouldn't it be wonderful if in... Uh, if, as a consequence of that, he actually lost his seat and was no longer in Holyrood. And that could come. I can see that happening. I can see that happening, folks. And we're going to do whatever we can to ensure that comes to pass. That's that's for sure. And Jordan says if she goes, she would just blame it on Westminster. A lot of her fans are already blaming it on MI5 and the secret British state that... Un that doesn't actually exist. Hey, good morning to you, John, British and proud. And, well, somebody who's been amazing these days has indeed been Jackie Bailey, and, and she's she's been very good. She's been the star of all of this, as Brian points out there. And just what we were saying there, Ryan goes, will she resign? It depends upon the impartiality. That's the word, that's the word I was looking for, the impartiality of the Ethics Committee and what their recommendations will be after they've drawn their conclusions. Nelson thinks Hamza wants Sharia law. Well, the thing with Hamza is, you know, if you're a true believing Muslim, you wouldn't actually support Hamza because he just goes along with the secularism of the the, the Scottish secular state. Uh, he's not he's not like a godly Muslim in any sense of the term. Hamza, you know, he's just a He's just a kind of corrupted by secularism. So I don't know why he even gets the Muslim vote. You know, a true believing Muslim, why on earth would you vote for, for somebody like Hamza Yusuf? Um, uh, 
Richard says, Hamza and Sturgeon want to take our liberty for the sake of freedom. That's 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 true. That's all part of of the 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 uh, the Scottish state, which has been getting really panned in the in the media. Something rotten at the nationalist core, says this uh, Daily Telegraph editorial. But they also point out here, you know, that the system has proved so flawed and the SNP so supremely arrogant, it does not occur to Mr. Salmond that he helped to create that environment and has also been pointed out by Charles Moore. It's the unionist establishment in Britain that also allowed this corruption to to go ahead in their own creation, you know. Um that that unionists, at least the the political unionists who who run the show, have to share some blame as well because it was the British Parliament that set up Holyrood and allowed this uh, farce to to continue and allowed these little children to basically um, steal all the sweeties. Well, Ian says here, is there a danger that a redeemed salmon may lead the party again if Sturgeon resigns? He's more old school centrist compared to Sturgeon and could once again rejuvenate the party. It's a good question, Ian. I, th I just feel that his brand has been tainted so much that it's unlikely he can come back. I, so that would be my answer. I don't think so. Um, <clears throat> if it wasn't for all the things that happened in his past, he probably could. But at this stage, I don't see him making a comeback. I can't see that at all. I think it's going to now move into a more kind of fruitcake angle, which will possibly be an unelectable angle, certainly under the Angus Robertsons and uh, Joanne Cherries and the Pete Wishart's and all these sorts of people there. They're going to take it in a fruitcake direction, which is really going to end up in the um, in the bin, basically. It's not going to uh, it's not going to appear to be credible once Sturgeon goes. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So we've got our interview coming up. Uh, yeah, as as Sharon says, Salmon would be a liability. Totally, totally. That that has to has to be the the case there. And well, yeah, you're right, Anne. If there is one man to blame for all of this, and everybody who voted it, what's this here? Aye, aye. So what I'm just going to do now for two or three minutes is just to do a This Day in British History um, moment. And the reason why we always do our This Day in British History is because we uh, want we we want to understand how we arrived at what we have today. And therefore, we want to appreciate the value of it. So we always do it this day in British history. And it's upon this particular um, little story that we always base our competition at the top of the hour as well. So, and we tell these stories, as we said last week, so that the mystic chords of memory may be stirred to appreciate the things which bind us together in order that the better angels of our nature may be awakened as Abraham Lincoln said. Now, it was on this day, it was on this day, it was on this day that uh, a certain person, a certain person came to Prestwick Airport and this is the first time that this person ever came to Britain and that person never came back since, and it was their only visit to Britain. Now, does anybody know who I might be talking about? On this day, on the 3rd of March in 1960, a certain man came to Prestwick Airport, and Scotland was never the same since, and we've remembered that day ever since. And, of course, I am talking about the one and only, the great... Elvis Presley set foot in Scotland on this day on the 3rd of March 1960 and we'll put up that on our Facebook page earlier 
uh, later today. And it's a good wee story of one of the, the girls who got to, to, to meet him when he came off the plane and got an autograph. Anne Murphy, who was then aged 16, was one of those lucky enough to meet the man who sold more than 600 million records. And she says here, I used to babysit for a Sergeant Phelps at the US Air Base. I was at work one day when he turned up at my house and told my mum that Elvis would be at the air base that night and I should go if I wanted to see him. My mum ran to the phone box to call me at work and I couldn't believe it. I had all his records. And when he arrived at the airport, he was shown about by Lieutenant Colonel Ed Miller, now retired, who lives in Ayrshire. And he says, I got the job as Sergeant Presley's escort, probably because I was a professional musician before the war. And I like this bit. He was an extremely pleasant, sincere young man who took the time and trouble to speak to everyone he met. The lucky few fans who were in the right place at the right time were left with the memory of a lifetime. And that was today on the 3rd of March in 1960 at Prestwick Airport, where the US Air Force used to have a base and where they would stop off on flights to, to refuel between North America and, and Europe. And yeah, TC got, got that one right. TC got that one right. That was 3rd of May 1960. Sorry, 3rd of March 1960, on this day in 1960. Yeah. Absolutely, James. Elvis. Elvis, absolutely. Good. <clears throat> okay, now back to the fish fight that's basically going on. The... Um, the fish fight that's going on in the, the Scottish Parliament. Um, and it's a consequence of the Scottish National Party not being properly held to account by the media that we have here in Scotland and indeed throughout the, throughout the United Kingdom. And We saw that as well, of course, with, you know, we've got the Lord Advocate and so on, who is uh, who is not only the Crown Prosecutor, but also sits with the Scottish administration in their cabinet. Uh, so that's clearly, um, that shouldn't be happening. And if we had a proper media holding the politicians to account here in Scotland, then that would not be happening either. Um so we're all hoping that Sturgeon is going to resign before the 6th of May election. But if she doesn't, we are still going to ensure that we are going to be um, campaigning against her as much as possible. Now, it was mentioned yesterday, there was a statement in Holyrood that it's on it's definitely going on because there was some some people saying uh, last week, oh, it, it should be cancelled. But no, it's definitely on. It's the 6th of May and the polling stations are going to be open. Now, what they're also doing, and this is a this is an unfortunate thing, is that they are trying to really ramp up the level of postal voting to the point and this is unbelievable, but to the point where the SNP is actually sending out unsolicited letters inside where you get a postal vote application form that's already pre-populated with your name and address. And this is a letter from the SNP with a pre-populated postal vote application form that all you need to do is sign and send it to the returning officer. They're sending that out along with a a leaflet vote SNP. I mean, that sh that's that should not be happening, really. There's o they're obviously doing it because there's no law that specifically prohibits it. But it that that's just basically manipulating the system, and they're learning from the manipulation of the mail-in ballots that happened at the 2020 American election, where there were so many mail-in ballots that they could not simply be verified properly. And there is a danger if we move to 
largely postal voting, which is what's what they're trying to move it to, that we will end up corrupting our democracy. Because postal voting should only be for those who um, are not well enough or uh, frail to the point that they can't get to the polling station. That's what the poll, that's what postal ballots were meant to do. But what they're trying to do now is to just get everybody onto the postal system. And a postal system can be easily corrupted because if you have millions of postal votes, you simply do not have the time and energy and ability to check the signatures to make sure that everybody who says they are who they are. Now, that's that's a concern for us here in Scotland and throughout the United Kingdom, because whatever some people may say, the British democratic system has been very good and is run extremely well. And it was only when postal voting came in, in um, when it was pushed heavily, that the system started to get corrupted. We're still at the stage where we can row back from that and get to a, and get to a proper system again. But if they are going to continue now to just push postal voting as the norm, then we do have an issue with the potential corruption of our democracy. And the person that was giving the, the speech yesterday in Holyrood was saying that they expect possibly up to 40% of people voting by mail. Now, that's going to be so many people that I don't know how those numbers are going to be properly verified. When you send in your postal ballot, how is the person who counts that going to know that you are who you are? That's going to be hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of people voting by post, which is not verifiable properly. And so that's a, that's a bad way to move, and we shouldn't be going in that direction. We shouldn't be going in that direction. We Anything but that, quite frankly. So that's a bad sign that's coming in is... The, 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 the move to postal voting and it's all the usual suspects who are promoting this Sadiq Khan heavily promoting that the safest way to vote is to vote by post um, and others like the SNP heavily promoting postal votes and that's a very bad sign just something the watchman in the wings here just telling you that's something to look out for because that's not a good sign that that's going on there um Back to some comments here. We've got our our man coming up at the top of the hour, uh, Ronnie Kane, who is our co-director here at A Force for Good. And that's the danger, is that it does a bit smell like things that shouldn't be going on there, Paul. Um, uh, TC says, George Galloway is spitting feathers at the SNP's attempt to suppress all others standing against the SNP this May. Well, I guess what you mean there is that it's um, it's going to be hard for small parties like Galloway's and the others that are out there, such as Abolish the Scottish Parliament Party and so on, to actually campaign and indeed to be heard. And that's another problem with the postal ballots, is that they, they sent out sort of mid-April, at least three weeks, at least three weeks before the actual um, end of the campaign. So people will tend to get their postal ballot, fill it in straight away and send it back. And there's still three weeks to go before the end of the campaign. And anything could happen in those three weeks. For example, you could vote for Nicola Sturgeon mid-April via your postal ballot only to find that she resigns a week before the election. So, you know, you, you're you voting on things that's not fully completed yet. So you're in, the postal ballot is encouraging people to vote before the end of the campaign. Now, who does that benefit? That only benefits the major parties, those parties that uh, already are already known about those parties who already have the mass media beaming them into everybody's houses. It doesn't help the little party in your area who delivers a really good leaflet one week before the polling day 
and you read it and you think, oh, I wish I had voted for them. Well, you can't vote for them anymore because you've already voted two weeks ago. So postal ballots uh, mitigate against, they work against small parties because they encourage people to vote quickly before they have all the information and before the end of the campaign has been properly concluded. So they're, they're wrong all round. Postal ballots are wrong all round. But people who want to manipulate the system will promote postal voting for their own particular ends. And that's, uh, that's a concern. Postal voting tends to corrupt the system. No question about that. Uh, <clears throat> Nelson says, let's call it as it is. The SNP are devious and full of skullduggery. They, they, they certainly are. They certainly are. And, you know, we mustn't, we mustn't, as a people, we must not uh, give them another another uh, session in, in Parliament. Uh, they, we must not give them our authority to be in again because a really good article by Tom Harris which I'll, I'll mention earlier he's a, he's a, he's a, he was a Labour MP and he's just talking here about how this is in the Daily Mail uh, at the weekend on the 27th of February and he's saying that if we vote for these guys it's going to be an endorsement of its dogmatic approach an endorsement of everything that is wrong and it's going to be an endorsement of Yusuf's efforts to also it will be a stamp of approval by an electorate on Yusuf's assault on free speech and that's why we have to give Humza the heave we have to give hopeless Humza the heave he has to lose in Glasgow Pollock and he has to lose hard I mean he cannot be rewarded for his anti-free speech carry on for his anti-free speech efforts he, he has to be punished electorally for that and we're going to do what we can watch this space watch this space now just before the top of the hour i'm going to and before we bring in our guest who i see is in the waiting room we are going just here to give you our competition now the competition is for this little box of mints which is from stewarts of scotland and it's a nice little tin here of 40 quality mints. And it's got a lovely London bus passing. And it's got the Union Jack in the corner. And it's this is part of their London collection of mints. And that's going to the first person who sends in the correct answer. And you have to send it by email, please. And please send it to this email, which is contact at a force for good UK. That's the only email we'll be checking for the answer to this question. And we'll announce the winner at the bottom of the hour just before we finish. And the question is, in what year did the king of rock and roll visit and land in Prestwick Airport in what year did Elvis arrive in Prestwick Airport that's to the first person who sends us the answer at contact at aforceforgood.uk and these will be winging their way to that person later this afternoon along with a copy of our latest Union Heart fantastic Okay, now it is the top of the hour and I have the one and only Ronnie Kane in the waiting room. I'm going to bring him in. Ronnie is our co-director and please do say hello to Ronnie. And we're going to talk about purging the sturgeon and giving Humza the heave and what are the likelihood of them actually losing this 6th of May. So, hello, Ronnie. 
Hello, Alistair. Good morning Hi. to you. Good morning to you, and good to see you there. And you're looking good this morning. Um, how good. are things? You're feeling good as well. Excellent. Well, we're, f we're feeling good as well because we're on a, you know, we're, for the first time in a long time, we're feeling hopeful that, in fact, the shine is coming off the SNP. Uh, it should have come off many years ago, of course. But as you know, we live in a society where the mass media basically bow down to the SNP. Uh, so this time they can't ignore what's going on. What are your thoughts about what is happening in Holyrood today? Well, it certainly is an interesting uh, time that we're living through at the moment. Um, but I have said since the referendum of 2014 that following that, the wind has gone out of the sails of the SNP. And they remain in power because there is a flawed system uh, which um, reduces uh, the support, if you like, or the, the voting for the three unionist uh, parties. Um, and they're still a minority uh, and they need to be bolstered by uh, another party. So. Uh, we don't emphasize this enough that we won the referendum. Unionists, Scots voters, came out in their droves. Um, the highest turnout ever recorded. And it was a 10% read. It wasn't half a percent. Uh, it wasn't minuscule. It was a staunching 10%. And yet, they lost, and we've still got them ruling Scotland. And Sturgeon and her cohorts um, are abusing um, the very ethos of democracy. But of course, that goes back further still. I think there is a history lesson to be learned from it, and when Union Heart comes out. I don't suppose it'll be out in this, uh, or you'll have time to put it into the special edition that's coming out. Um, but that would be something to consider, is following how the SNP rose from being such a small and marginal party, and is still a minority, but the tail is wagging the dog in Scotland. And that is not right. It has to be rectified. However, uh, to come into the present day rather than remain in history, um, I saw resignation matters on Facebook yesterday, and there was 14 headings that were resignation matters for the First Minister, and five of them are headed up misleading Parliament by promising cooperation misleading Parliament when complaints were known of. Misleading Parliament, what was said between Sturgeon and Salmon. Misleading Parliament about a secret meeting. Misleading Parliament by denying knowledge of how... Uh, oh gosh, can't read my writing now. Um, how uh, the involvement was proceeding. So that's just a few things that are resignation matters. The fact is that uh, the First Minister uh, has been in breach of the Ministerial Code. And I'm reliably informed not once, not twice, and that would be enough for the First Minister to be uh, resigning. But 38 times. Uh, yes. In breach. Yes. Uh, so this gives you an idea of the imbalance that there is in Hollywood. It's a flawed system. Not only is a building a disaster, the people who occupy it are creating the disaster that Scotland is in today. And this is something that has to be remedied. Hollywood is not an essential 
part of governing in Scotland. It is a luxury. It is a talking shop. It is doing uh, nothing that the Scottish office cannot do um, in Scotland, as it used to be for something like three centuries. The Scottish office uh, would be the link to Westminster. Now we have Holyrood, which is not a link to Westminster, it is diametrically opposed to Westminster. They are uh, taking a stance. And I'm not talking just about the SNP. All of them were Remainers in Brexit. Mm -hmm. All yes. of them, all of them uh, supported Remaining. I was one of the million and whatever uh, voters in Scotland that voted for Brexit. There was no party uh, supporting me. It's, it's a very good point because in, on many issues, there's actually more uh, representation in Westminster for the opinions of many Scots than there is in Holyrood. As you say, at the Brexit referendum, there was no party leader um, who supported it. And on other issues such as Trident or immigration, there's far more, uh, or stopping immigration that is, there's far more representation among the diversity of MPs at Westminster. More people speaking for us at Westminster than speaking for us at Holyrood. Um, Holyrood is very much, uh, it's like a, it's all, they're all chums together, basically. Once you get into Holyrood, you get your big salary, uh, you're seeing everybody every day, you're sitting in the canteen with them, uh, you're standing shoulder to shoulder with them, being interviewed by STV or whatever, and you're all just big mates together. I mean, I saw a, a, a picture today of, uh, you know, there was, I, I wouldn't name them, but it was a liberal MS, Liberal Dem MSP sitting in what looked like a car and he goes, my my friend Anas Sarwa, who's a Labour now, uh -huh. okay, you, you can be civil and friendly but you don't have to be like, be like tell the world how, how chummy you are with your political right. opposition, you know it's, it's you're not really meant to That's do that, you're meant to maintain a social distance between them, even if you're quite civil and polite with them uh, as you should be normally you don't have to be telling everybody what a great you know, chum no, you are no. with them, and, 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 and that's chumocracy. It's a chumocracy, and right. a, a well-paid chumocracy, and, and a here's, great here's uh, sinecure thing, if you get it. What you've just described there is acceptable behaviour amongst people who support the United Kingdom, uh, but uh, their party loyalties are uh, diverse. Um, but the SNP are about destroying the United Kingdom. They are not one of us. They are separatists and they don't want a United Kingdom and they're doing their damnedest to break up the United Kingdom. So why is any politician of any other party so chummy with them? This is wrong. Separatists mm. are seditionists, and that should be a crime. I have no intention uh, of sitting on my backside um, and allowing these people, who again I repeat, are the minority, the tail wagging the dog, and yet uh, the people who are elected to Holyrood, the devolved assembly in Holyrood, and I don't give a fig for the Scotland Act or uh, the powers that come out of Westminster um, authorising devolution. Devolution is a mistake and it should be recognised as a mistake. And these people that are in Holyrood at the moment are doing no favours to the United Kingdom. They are in fact opposing the Westminster government. This is wrong. Devolution was about <clears throat> the power coming down to the people uh, and, and in an ideal world, I suppose, working in concert with the real government. 
not yes, exactly. Been, that, that's been. how it was meant to be. It, it was right. meant to be like, we'll set this up so that you can, you can do your stuff in Scotland, but it was assumed that you would want to do it in concert with the rest of the of United course. Kingdom. There wasn't an idea we're right. going to set up the gallows that will hang ourselves. But that's, in fact, what got built, you know. The, oh. the, the, the people at the time, Tony Blair and the Labour Party, they did build the gallows that they were to hang their Absolutely. own party upon. Absolutely. And that could have been changed. At, the time was right at 2014, as soon as we won considerably the, yeah. the uh, referendum then the Tory government at the time should have gone straight in and made dif made changes to the Scotland Act which would secure the union. Um, but what instead they did was they gave more and more powers to the Scottish Parliament, which at that time was their political opposition. OK, there's one thing given powers to, like if it had been a Tory party running Holyrood, given more powers to a Tory party, given more powers to another Tory party, I could understand that. But they actually gave these massive powers <laughs> to their political opponents and not just um, uh, general opponents, but their absolutely committed opponents who hate their own guts. They gave Mortal those, mort that's the phrase I'm looking for, mortal enemies. <laughs> they gave all these new it's powers crazy. to their mortal enemies to use against them. And then they complained that for the last seven years now, we've been in a constitutional mire. Well, of course, because that's what they set up. After 2014, they ensured that things would continue in this way, that Scotland would continue to be obsessed with the constitution because... They made that happen after 2014 yes. by giving more powers to their mortal enemies to use against themselves. And um, they missed a fantastic opportunity. And we have to presume they missed that fantastic opportunity because they simply had no clue what they were doing. doing. And I've come to believe that now, the more I've studied the British establishment in Westminster, is that they don't really understand how the United Kingdom is no. held together. No. They don't even understand that the Union is the United Kingdom. Like they'll talk about the United Kingdom and the Union as if the two things are separate um but the two things are the same thing you know if you care about the united kingdom then you care about the union the clue is in the name Absolutely. and without the union there is no united kingdom there is no remaining united kingdom yeah. there's really only england with northern ireland and wales hanging perilous perilously on to its coattails oh. so um so it, our job and you, yes. you and i have been extremely good at this as have the whole AFFG team is literally to educate our politicians about the nature of the union and we do see positive signs in that regard but it's a big hard fight and you know yeah. we we understand you understand I understand the whole team that we rely upon here at A Force for Good understands very well the nature of what the United Kingdom is and how it's held together and we are trying to promote it now you mentioned their Union Heart and our special edition which is yeah. coming up we have a magazine um, that we we publish occasionally it's called Union Heart the fourth issue is going to be a special edition it's going to be at least 24 pages maybe 36 pages and it's going to be a policy issue which is to say it's going to list what we believe is are all the policies that a government should do if it wants to maintain the union going forward, not just Looking for the next four years, years but yeah. yes, but for the next yeah. 100 years. Right. And so we'll be pushing that out, uh, hopefully before before the um, May election. Yes. But yes. in April is when we're aiming to get it out. And it's going to be a good one. And that's for all the people that will go to any union supporter that... Um, requests it would you like to speak about our union supporters campaign a little bit uh -huh. ronnie and, and what exactly that is <laughs> uh, somebody just saying here if one says if ronald kane was standing at election i'd vote for him <laughs> and, uh, I, I, I read that myself there and that's why i laughed um sorry what was the question again Alison? uh just expand upon our union supporters program and the, the value right, of it right, yeah yeah it's a uh, it's most important um and i think uh the 
support is absolutely essential. And to our supporters, who are very loyal uh, uh, in supporting, um, I would just say that we will be going back out on the streets, counter demonstrating, because the SNP won't give up their marching arm. Um, so that's going to happen. And we need all the support that we can get. And uh, for instance, I have, I, I, I am still blessed to have a mother-in-law, even at my advanced years, uh, there is someone on this planet older than I am. And she's going to be 97 next month. Congratulations. And, and she must be our oldest supporter. And I would just say mm. that 15 years ago, she would have been out there waving the flag. Uh, no question about it. Uh, on more than one occasion, she was prepared to chain herself to a fence, to a railing, uh, because she felt so strongly about certain things that were not right. Um, fortunately, for the uh, sake of the family, their blushes were uh, saying <laughs> that she never actually did it. But the point being, she had, and she still has, the right spirit. And what we want is more supporters um, because it's vitally important that you carry on doing what you do. Uh, and, and this requires financial support. What you're doing could not be done without financial support. Uh, and so for everyone who does support us now, I say thank you very much. Um, uh, there are, for instance, um, no, I'm not going to go any further on that. I think I've expressed myself very well there. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, I think we should get back to a, what's going on in Hollywood this morning. Mm -hmm. But before we do, Alistair, before you speak again, could I just say, picking up on a thread that uh, you mentioned uh, a few moments ago, the Prime Minister, I think, has realized that there is a problem about the union and the united kingdom and how it's perceived and i've read reports that he's putting a substantial amount of money aside uh, in order that there be a special team put together um, in order to uh, beef up perhaps that's not the right expression yes he's, yes uh, uh, and the perception in Westminster probably of the United Kingdom. So I think the Prime Minister is on the right tracks there. Unfortunately, he's not going to get any support from Holyrood, who, as I've already said, are diametrically opposed to Westminster. Mm -hmm. All of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. All of them yeah. have to go. But this morning, what we want is for the First Minister and uh, a deputy, um, the chief of the civil service, uh, and a couple of others uh, to go. They ha we have to get their resignation before we can move forward. Well, do you know what, Vonnie? That's that's a good that's a good point to end on because that could be coming. A few months ago, that would just have been out of the question. But if this independent committee finds that she broke the ministerial code then she, basically everybody believes that she will have to resign and that could be a come up come up for the books but that's what she would have to do and yes. as you said at the start there there's so many ways in which she has broken it ways that would have confined a former labor first minister or mp or msp uh, simply to the wilderness and she's done several of them and she's only got away with it because of the sheer power and I'm going to bring this to a close I just okay. want to read out this from Ryan who says keep up the fantastic work Ronnie the unionist cause will succeed with the determination and zeal as shown by fine gentlemen such as yourself and Alistair well thank you very much nice Ryan for that for that <laughs> lovely for that lovely comment Excellent. and you mentioned our union supporters program these are people who pay uh, donate um, around about £1.15 a week, which works out at £5 a month to our 
cause at forcefulgood.uk forward slash slash to do that yes, yes. And, union hyphen supporters and if you've been paying a fiver a week for a some time now uh, a, a month um, then maybe consider increasing it if your circumstances permit uh, absolutely uh, and why not uh, it's a good cause um, we're not at all daunted by the fact that uh, we're not a large organisation, but we feel strongly about the union and we recognise in you, Alistair, someone who deserves not only to be supported on our counter demonstrations, but to be supported financially. And that's uh, important too, equally important, I would say. Well, thank, thank you very much for that comment. Ronnie, and I should mention to people as well that we do have several people who are retained on a very small retainer for our social media platforms on Instagram and on Facebook. They're all important. And we have somebody who who um, is dedicated to sending materials to MSPs and MPs and opinion formers and make sure that anybody who talks about the union in a positive way, gets a copy of the Union Heart or a copy of the Wee Book uh, or, a, or, a, or a letter or a card to support them and help to stiffen their backbone. So I, I would we, say we have people who are dedicated supporter, to doing all of those sorts of things. Yes, absolutely. I, I, any supporter that you've got an email address for, um, I would say to them, uh, send you a quick email with their home address and they will get a copy of the Union Heart. Yes, the Union Heart is is free. Uh, just tell us that you want it at contact at a force for good dot UK. Okay, Ronnie, I'm going to right. let you go. Okay. Thank you very much for I'm that. Going Give my best to, wishes. They're going to have to drag me out your waiting room. Yes, <laughs> and and thank thank your mother in law. I know t- whom you're referring. Yes, and yes, uh, I will do. A fantastic lady and a great supporter, a 97-year-old, and she she's is. perhaps our, our most senior I, union I supporter. So. Yes, so. yes, <laughs> fantastic. Okay, Ronnie, okay, I'll, I'll say goodbye. I'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye. Wonderful. The one and only Ronnie Kane, who is our co-director here at, here at A Force for Good. Now, um, Ronnie was speaking there about and I was also speaking there about policies and um, policies uh, for the union and a fantastic article was written and I thank very much the person who sent this to me and who sent it to me in time for this broadcast and it's written by a man that we have a great deal of respect for, uh, Professor Nigel Bigger. And it's my plan for defeating Sturgeon's devious SNP. And we're going to uh, put this up on our Facebook page and put it out on our Twitter today. And it's extremely well done. And just in a few hundred words, he encapsulates in a way that I've never seen before, what's wrong with all the various suggestions that uh, people make to save the union, and he finishes with what you have to do to, to save the United Kingdom. For example, he points out here that, you know, people don't want independence, so called, because they think that's going to be the way to make the trains run on time. Um, it's really, a lot to do with um, with actual identity, with national, with a sense of identity. Um, he points out that um, Scottish nationalists hankering after independence is about the quasi-religious need to infuse lives with transcendent meaning, plugging the self into a grand national project. Which it so is, absolutely. And that's understandable. And there's nothing wrong with that as such. 
And he points out Scottish independence is more a moral vision than a practical solution. That's so well put. This is why arming Holyrood with more powers or federalising the UK will not suffice to save the Union. Economic arguments might restrain more sober voters, but probably not the adventurous young. Exposing the untruths and inconsistencies of the nationalist myth will help, and that's what we are always doing, but it's not enough. Above all, what is needed to save the Union is the development of a morally attractive story about Britain, with which Scots, especially the young, will want to identify. And this is what is so true, a morally attractive story about Britain. And we realised that back in 2012 when we set up a force for good, whose name itself is, is about moral identity, about Britain being a force for good. Because we understood from a very early age that being British was itself a moral identity, especially when people would say something like, well, you shouldn't do that because that's not British, okay? You're infusing the identity with a sense of morality and that's we've always had that in Britain and uh, in the British identity perhaps other nations have it as well but we certainly have it here in Britain that's that's why it's so hurtful to many of us when we see people like um, Sturgeon or, or, or Hamza Yusuf doing things to our national constitution and to our national way of life which are simply not British and not acceptable and of course, they're not the only ones who have been doing it. Many governments in Westminster have been doing it as well. But things like the anti-free speech law completely goes against what it means to be British. Because being British is about liberty. Many of the things that are happening today with the lockdown as well, very much against what we understand as our British liberties. And it's not British, you know, it's not British to wear a mask and to, to be fearful of invisible ghosts in the air that's just so wrong anyway without me going down that route too much let me see who has won our prize and the question was in what year did elvis presley come to britain uh, to prestwick airport and the answer of course was this day, the 3rd of March in 1960. And we do have a winner. And let me type up the winner's name here. And I'm glad to see who has won. It is Robert. Robert has won the the mints. So they'll be winging your way to us, Robert. Please send us by that email again your address and we will fire that off to you. And something I also want to give a plug to is our fantastic shopper. If you are go going to... Um, to the supermarket, okay? Why not carry this amazing Hessian bag? Okay, it's really strong, really sturdy, very big, with strong, strong loops. And basically, this is better than your bag for life. This is better than a plastic bag for life because what you'll find with the plastic bags for life is that they don't actually last for life okay your plastic bag won't won't be a chum with you for life but this this hessian shopper could very well be with you for life in fact you can get that at our shop which the ticker there is strolling across the bottom and it's also at a force for good dot uk forward slash shop hyphen one where you can not only get your union jack shoppers but you can get lots of other things there as well including our 
wee book for the Union and including cards, umbrellas, Union Jack flags and the sort of things that we're going to need for activism. So check that out. Um, Union Jack on both sides. And we sold a couple of those this week, which is why I was minded to put these in. Now, folks, if you've been watching on Twitter, if you retweet us, if you retweet us with a comment, then we can retweet your tweet to 26,500 people. So click that retweet button, choose quote tweet, put in a good word for us, and we'll retweet retweet your good words to 26 and a half thousand people so that's a way that we can help you get get heard now we're also on rumble.com forward slash uk a force for good we back up all our wednesday morning programs on rumble and we also back them up on bitshoot as well so if you follow on any if you're on any of these whether on bitshoot or whether on rumble please do give us a follow. And we also today announcing for the first time that we are also on Gab as well, gab.com forward slash UK a force for good. So if you're on Gab, give us a follow there as well, please. So basically we are spreading ourselves around as much as possible in order to have as many insurance policies as we possibly can as far as our voice is concerned. Ben says, are we getting the scarves back in? Um, I'll need to check up with our uh, the person who does the purchasing for us and, and see about that, but we may well, we may well. Thanks for raising that, Ben. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so, Stephen says, well done, Robert, for winning the prize, as does McGregor, McGregor. And um, Tommy says, well done. And Adam sums up what future shall we have a Scotland which is ripped out of the UK against our will or stay in the UK and work together to take this country forward that's what we're about taking this country forward all of us together absolutely okay folks it's been wonderful uh, Nelson says another top show Alistair thank you Nelson for watching and Ryan says, keep up the good work. And thanks for your kind comments today, Ryan. Folks, we are going to say goodbye to you. Uh, please do check out our, please do check out our, uh, our shop and also our union supporters program, if you can, if you are able to help, because we do need some help uh, going forward on that so folks it just remains for me to say god bless the united kingdom thanks for watching and god save the queen see you next week <laughs>